Hello and welcome to this brand new Blender Smoothie tutorial. In this tutorial I'll be teaching you how to create this spiral galaxy that you can see right here. Uh, we'll be working a lot with particle systems, force fields, and co some compositing at the end to tie it all together. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll go ahead and delete the default cube first. Uh, make sure in your world settings the background color is set to black and that you're using the cycles render engine up here, not the blender internal. And we're just going to go ahead and I'll go to my top view here. We can press Shift A and add a circle. Now the first step that we're going to do is we're going to use this, this circle as sort of an emitter object to emit the main particles for the galaxy. And they won't really have much motion um, on their own. We're going to be working with force fields for the most part to manipulate them. Uh, the main thing we want to get right though with this emitter object is the distribution of particles. Now we want it to be much more concentrated towards the center, uh, mainly due to the density of galaxies towards the center of uh, themselves. You can see these brighter spots where there are greater clusters of stars. And so we wanted to sort of thin out in terms of star density the farther or the closer to the edges that we get. We could do this through weight painting, but I found it's a lot easier to just press tab to go into edit mode and press E to extrude, right click, then go ahead and press S for scale. 0.5 to scale it in by half and repeat E enter S 0.5 and just you repeat that step a couple times 5 you'll notice that each time it's scaling it to half of the size uh, that it was initially when we extruded it uh, so this results in a much more dense collection of faces towards the center of the circle that sort of fades out or thins out the farther to the edges it gets we'll keep doing that a couple more times 5, and then we'll extrude one more time and hit Alt-M and merge at the center. Uh, and just to make sure we didn't accidentally extrude something twice, let's go ahead and press A twice to select everything, uh, and W, let's go ahead and remove doubles just to make sure that there weren't any overlapping edges or anything. And it looks like they weren't. I'm going to turn this off to help speed things up a bit. Uh, the next thing we want to do before we start working with the particle systems, uh, you'll notice the shading is a bit weird on the circle, uh, and that's because the normals are actually opposite of what they should be if we're treating this as the top view, and this will be the view that we'll be looking at the galaxy from through the camera. If you go into edit mode and hit N and come over here to normals on the side, you hit like face normals or anything like that and bring up the size, you'll see that they point downward instead of upward. So we just want to press W and choose flip normals right here so that they point up and that fixes the weird shading issue as well. We can turn that off. All right, so this is basically the main emitter object. We're not really going to be working with any other emitter objects at any point. So this will have two particle systems that we'll be working with. Uh, so the first one we're going to go ahead and add, if we come over here to the particle settings, we'll just click new and add new settings. We can name this star or stars. Uh, these will just be the main stars. We'll be creating another particle system after this for some brighter stars. Uh, but this will be the main body of the galaxy. Uh, we'll leave the settings as emitter. Uh, we want to change the end frame to 2 because we really want these all emitted on 1 to 2 frames. We don't want them slowly being emitted from the object over a varying period of time. Uh, so then we can go ahead and adjust the lifetime from 50 to, oh, uh, we can do about 100. We'll do 150 just to be on the safe side. Generally, I run the simulation until about the 60th or 70th frame, I find gives the best result, but we can overshoot that a little bit just to be on the safe side. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to change this from jittered to random because I feel like it gives a more organic uh, particle scattering result than the jittered setting. We can also turn off even distribution because that really helps randomize things even further. Now if we were to go ahead and hit Alt-A right now, the particles sort of jump up a bit and fall down. Uh, we don't want either of those things, so to keep them from jumping up, we can turn this normal down right here under emitter geometry, turn this all the way down to zero, and then we can scroll down even further to the field weights, and we want to turn off gravity. And it may seem counterintuitive because we're creating a galaxy which is pretty much completely shaped by gravity, uh, but since this isn't an actual simulation, more of an artistic rendition, we'll have a lot more control over that with the force fields that we'll be adding later. And this gravity effect is really only as it would affect, or as you would see it affecting things very close to the surface of a planet, like here on Earth. 
and doesn't really represent the larger scale uh, that gravity works on in galaxies. So we'll turn that all the way down and hit Alt-A, and the particles are standing completely still now. And you'll notice if we look in the top view, I don't know how well you can see, I can uh, turn up the display size here for the particles so you can see a little better, but there are a lot more clustered towards the center than there are on the edges, which is the purpose of the editing we did beforehand on the disk that we have here. So I'm going to turn that back down just so we can see it a little easier when we start adding more particles. We want to give this a little bit of Brownian motion. Brownian is, as it says there, it's just the amount of random erratic particle movement. We want some of that because if we don't add that and we start working with force fields, it's going to look too uniform. It won't look quite natural. So we'll go ahead and make this value about, we'll just start out with 0.2. We might adjust that later on, but for now that should work. If you press Alt-A, you can see the particles are starting to sort of move around a bit. Um, might be a little too high. Maybe we'll do 0.175, about there. Uh, so those are basically the settings for these particles. Obviously we're going to increase the number of particles a lot more. Uh, but for now, while we're still fiddling with the basic settings, we'll leave it low so we can view this pretty quickly in the viewport. Um, now the objects that this is going to be using are going to be star objects that we'll create in the next layer. So I'm just going to come down here to where the layers are, the bottom of the viewport here, and click on the next layer. And we're just going to be using really simple icospheres with a couple different emission shaders for the main stars. So I'm just going to press Shift A, we'll add an icosphere. Over here in the toolbar on the left, we can turn down the subdivisions to 1, which we really need to do uh, to decrease the amount of faces in the scene, because uh, we're going to be having probably over 100,000 particles in this galaxy by the end of it. So we want to keep this as low as we can. You can't really turn it any lower than 1 without making it into almost like a cube, essentially. Um, so we'll leave it like that, and it looks pretty blocky, but from a distance it'll work just fine. We'll go ahead and come over here to the shader panel on the right. We can click on the little material icon there. We'll add a new shader, and we'll call this, uh, we'll just call this blue. And this will be the first of our shaders. I'm going to switch to rendered view here so we can see what's going on. Uh, we don't see anything yet because the background's black and we don't have any lights in the scene. So I'm going to come over here under surface and switch this from diffuse BSDF to emission. And now we can finally see it because it's casting its own light. We want to make sure this slider here on the right, the value slider in the color properties, is all the way up to white. And then we want to give this a little blue tint. Not something too extreme, uh, somewhere around there. Not quite halfway to the edge of the color wheel from the center, but right around there will work just fine. And we want to increase the strength pretty significantly up to something like 15. And it may be confusing at first because it looks like it's solid white now, and it is solid white from this point of view. Uh, but when you zoom out, some of the sort of the color tints that you add become more visible. And we'll be adding volumetric uh, components around the galaxy that'll dim the light a bit. Uh, and then more of the color will shine through. So the blue will be visible in the final render. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and press Shift D with this selected to duplicate it a couple times. Duplicate it so that we have six of these, and they're all completely identical. Um, now we can start going into each of these individual ones. Maybe I'll start with this one. Make this a single user. Maybe we'll make this dark blue, and maybe, maybe not dark blue, but we'll sort of give it a more intense blue, closer to purple than green, something like that. And maybe in one of these, we'll load that same dark blue shader. And then we'll leave more of the light blue ones, only a couple dark blue ones. And we'll leave those as they are. Uh, the reason we have duplicates of some of these is because we're now going to duplicate this one more time. Shift D, duplicate it. Make that a single user. And this will be our red shader. And we're just going to give this a slight red tint, something like that. Leaving the strength of the emission shader the same. We'll duplicate that one more time. Um, basically the reason we had the, and I'm going to go ahead and make this a single user and we'll make this uh, other red or something like that, we'll give that a slightly different red tint. The reason we duplicated those blue ones so many times is because we want more blue stars than we do red stars. Um, you may prefer a different color scheme. You can choose whatever star colors you want to try to get a galaxy that you're most interested in. I like kind of the slightly purple, mostly blue color 
And that's what you get with, with this result, with sort of a three to one ratio of blue to red. So we have this, these stars set up. I'm just going to press B for box select and click, a drag, click and drag a box around all of them. And I'm going to press Control G to group them. And over here on the left, we can name the groups. We'll just name that stars. Uh, we'll create a separate group for the brighter stars later on, like I said. Um, and again, if you render these, the red ones also don't really show up very well. They still look white, but uh, you'll see the difference once we start adding these into this particle system over here. I'm going to recenter my view here a bit. And we can right click this disk to select it again, go back into the particle settings. And we'll scroll down and come to the group option right here. This is down under the render tab. It's currently set to halo, which I don't really think does anything in the cycles render engine currently. I haven't really worked with it since Blender internal. We'll switch that over to group. And in this group option here, we're going to load the stars group. And we're going to set that to pick random. And what that basically does is it just picks objects randomly from the group instead of repeating the same count of them over and over again. And now that that's taken care of, we can go ahead and press Alt-A just to see these kind of show up. Obviously these are way too big, but we're going to leave the size where it's at right now because we're about to start adding the force field so we can kind of visualize this a little easier. And then we'll decrease the size later on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to let's increase this particle amount first of all to something like 2,000. Again, you don't want it too high because we don't want our viewport to slow down too much because we want this to be pretty pretty efficient while we're working with setting up the force fields. But we need probably more than 1,000 to get it to, to work effectively. And the first thing we're going to do is press Shift A and we will add a vortex force field. Find it right there. And all we're doing with this is we're trying to give it a simple, maybe very subtle rotational motion. It doesn't have to be very strong. In fact, if we just hit Alt-A right now, the default setting I think is too strong uh, because we don't need it to be moving that fast and it sort of contracts the particles inward. Uh, so if you see again from the start, they're sort of contracting inwards and they're not really expanding all the way out. They need to really fill the shape of the entire disk is what we're going for. Um, so we only need a very slight effect on this. We can come back here to the force field settings. We can try about 0.15, I think will probably be a good value. And they're moving very slowly, but that's okay because we don't really need to worry about the speed of this rotation. Um, it's not really going to affect how it plays out. If anything, the biggest thing it would affect would be what frame you would render the final, the final render on. Um, so with that out of the way, now we need to give it some shape because we want this to be a spiral galaxy, but right now it's, it's sort of just a disk that's kind of rotating around. There's no real shape to it. There's some brownie in motion, but uh, we want to give this more of a distinctive shape. So I'm going to go ahead and press Shift-A, and we're actually going to add a plane. And I'm going to press Z to go into wireframe view. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the edges of this plane to create a shape that's actually similar to what we see in the vortex force field. Not the effects of the vortex force field, but the display uh, for the force field itself, that spiral pattern that you see whenever you add the vortex force field. So I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode. We'll right click these bottom two edges, X to delete them, and then we'll right click this vertex up here, maybe drop it around the center. We'll do the same with this one. We'll press G and move that down here. I'm going to zoom in a bit so we can see this a little better. And then I'm just going to start control clicking at various points along this shape of the vortex force field. Just like that. Then I'm going to press tab, go back into object mode. We'll come over to the modifiers here and we're going to give this a subsurf modifier. Subdivision surface, just to smooth it out a bit because it's pretty blocky right now. We'll bump up that setting to... Now we'll bump it up to 3. Turn on optimal display. Actually, I don't really know if optimal display does anything in the viewport if it's just a single edge. So really this is just a two-dimensional object, but we'll turn it on anyway just to be on the safe side. And I'm going to go back into edit mode and kind of pull some of these vertices back out, just right-clicking them and pressing G to drag them out to fit the shape a bit more accurately. 
just like that. And then we can go ahead and press Shift D, duplicate this, R to rotate, and we'll rotate that around, I don't know, about that far. It's not really an exact science. And then Shift D again, rotate that around here. There we go. And then we want to sort of zoom in so we can select all of these at once. So we'll Shift right click the other arm that we just duplicated, and then Shift right click the last one. So we have all of those selected. And I'm just going to press Control J to make them all one object. And the last thing I'm going to do for this is I'm going to press Tab to go into edit mode, B for box select, and I'm going to drag a box around those center three vertices. And we're just going to scroll in so we can see this a little better, press Alt-M for merge, and merge them at the center so that this is all combined into a single connected shape. And the other thing I like to do sometimes is just to give it a little variation on occasion, I might uh, rotate it pressing R, Y, 180 to rotate it 180 degrees along the Y axis, and that just flips it from this point of view. Uh, so all the stars will be sort of uh, converging in a wave going the other direction. And we don't really need to flip the force field, the uh, vortex force field for that to take effect, because this is going to be a still render in the end anyway, and it doesn't really affect it. Uh, but this sometimes adds variety, especially if you're creating a bunch of them. Now, the way we can use this as a force field is we can go over here to the physics settings on the right, and we can enable the force field option for this. And if at first you start playing around with it, you see it's really just acting as if you were to just add a force from a force field, and you see the type is force. It's just sort of pushing all the particles out. Uh, to change that and actually take the shape into account, uh, we can switch the shape from point to surface. And what that does is the force now acts along the surface of the object. And you see it's still sort of shooting these particles out, which isn't what we want. But if in the early frames you see it's actually sort of, it's being affected by the shape that we just created. Problem is it's way too strong and it's the opposite of what we want. We want the particles to bind to this shape, not be repelled by it. So we're gonna have to give this a negative value and it's gonna have to be a small negative value. So let's try about negative 0 0.04, something like that, and see how that plays out. Okay, and we can sort of start seeing that. It looks like it's it's probably binding to it a little too strong, so I might try a negative 0 0.03 decrease that setting in value or in magnitude. We want to make sure the Brownian motion is still kind of taking effect so we can see that the shapes aren't perfect because these particles are still kind of wavering around at times. Um, and we can get a better idea of this if we come back here after selecting the disk into the particle settings, maybe increase the number of particles to 5,000. And we might come down here and decrease under the physics settings, in the particle system, uh, we might decrease the size to something smaller, like 0.01. They're going to be much smaller than that in the final render, but so we can still sort of see what's going on. And let's see how this plays out. It's probably about, it's still a little strong, so we might select the force field again, come back up here, turn this down to maybe negative 0.02, give that a shot and see how that looks. That's that's probably about where we want it. We'll try negative 0.025, and we'll leave it at that. Um, so if we animate that, that's about the shape that we want. It's not completely binding to the, the force field that we created, uh, but it generally follows the shape. That's about right. And like I said before, we would typically want to stop this simulation between 60, 70 frames, something like that. Uh, and you can see that if we stop it there, it has the general shape, but it's got enough variety that I think it'll work out. So we'll go back to the first frame. Um, we can go ahead and let's, let's hide that particle system for now as we work with the brighter stars. So we'll select that again, right click it, and I'm just going to click the eye icon right here, and that'll just hide it in the viewport. It'll still render there, and we can always turn that back on in the viewport later but that'll simplify things when we're working with the brighter stars. So let's go ahead and click the plus icon here to add a new particle system. Uh, let's call this bright stars. And we don't want nearly as many as we do the regular stars. In fact, we only want a couple of these, maybe, 
maybe 20, maybe 25, something like that. Uh, and again, we want to set the end frame to 2 because we want these all to be emitted pretty much at once. Uh, and the reason we're only using so few of these is because these are going to act more as, I don't know, maybe uh, really tight clusters of stars, or maybe there's a supernova, or something like that that really stands out. Uh, and we can get some nice glare effects on that in the compositing, and that'll really help sell the final image. But we don't need too many of those, so we'll leave that at about 25. Lifetime, bring that up to about 150, like we did with the other ones. Uh, again, switch that to random, uncheck even distribution, because that gives you a better scattering. And we're going to do the same thing where we turn off normal, put that back to zero, scroll down, turn off gravity, so that now if we animate it, uh, they'll still follow the patterns of the force field. Now, you'll notice immediately all of them are sort of clustered at the center. And that's because of the way we set up the geometry. And the reason I didn't use weight painting to begin with is because we're actually going to use that now for these brighter stars. Uh, technically, you could sort of flip those and do it the other way if you wanted, but this is pretty efficient for the these brighter stars. Uh, we can just switch this from object mode to weight paint. And we want to make sure this is set to add currently. And I'll scroll out a little bit and we just want to sort of paint over the outer layer at a strength of 1 because we want these to be most likely to appear in the very outer area. Because what we're doing here with the weight painting is painting the probability of a particle appearing in that region. And we'll decrease the strength from 1 to 0.75. And we'll scroll in maybe and then get the next ring in. And it doesn't matter if you paint backwards by accident or anything like that because this is set to add. And red is the maximum value, so we can't do anything to that previous layer when it's set to that. Sort of keep moving this in. And then we're going to switch this to mix for the last part. We'll set this to maybe 0.5. Zoom in paint the next layer. The reason we set that to mix is so that if we paint back, um, the worst thing it'll do is it'll decrease the probability instead of increase it, which is better since we want more particles in the outer edge. And we'll leave that center part blue because we really don't want any particles in there. Because if we get any bright stars in the center, we're not going to be able to see them because the center is going to be so bright. Uh, so we'll just sort of leave it at that. And I'm going to go back to object mode. And that created a vertex group for us to use. Uh, so that if we scroll down here to the vertex groups in the particle settings, uh, we can choose from density the group that we just created. And it's just called group by default. So we'll go ahead and load that in. And now if we hit Alt-A to animate this, we see that they're distributed much more evenly across the disk, uh, which is what we want for this particular particle system. So now that that's taken place, let's give those a little brownie in motion too. Maybe, uh, maybe 0.2, 0.175 like we did for the previous ones. Um, yeah, and that should work out pretty well. So now all we need to do are create, we need to create the objects for this setting, for this system. So we're going to go back to the second layer. I'm just going to grab one of the blue stars that we had before, make sure that's a blue one. We'll duplicate that over here, just so we can sort of see that this is going to be a different group. Uh, we want to go into Object, uh, we want to find, where's the group setting? Group right there. We want to remove that from the group. Oops, Object, Group, Remove from Group. Yes, we want to remove that because these are going to have a group of their own, otherwise they'll get mixed in with the main stars, and we don't want that because these are going to be a lot brighter. We're going to set this material to a single user by clicking that 5 icon right there. We'll rename this Bright Blue. And we'll leave the color the same, but we're going to increase the strength to 35. And we're going to go ahead and duplicate that once. Uh, we'll make that the same. And then we're going to duplicate one of the red stars over here. And again, you want to go down to Object group remove from group so it's removed from the stars group make this a single user and we'll call this bright red and we'll increase the strength again to 35 and now we want to press B and box select all of these control G and we'll put these in a bright stars group so this is completely separate and just so we don't really have to worry about the scaling now we'll leave those at the same size. We can we can fiddle with the scale and the particle particle settings. 
Uh, but let's come back into this layer and select the disk, back to the particle settings, and let's scroll down to the render tab again. And let's go into group and load the bright stars. If we animate this, again, they're way too big. Um, now we can start worrying about what size we actually want these particles to be at. Um, and they're, they're pretty small particles, as you might imagine. So these bright stars we're actually going to put at about 0 .004 in size. And that's actually pretty big compared to the other stars we're doing. I might actually decrease that a little bit more down to 0 .003, maybe 0 .0035. We can always fiddle with that later. Uh, but you can see I just hit Alt-A, and these are, these are pretty tiny stars. I think I will bring that down to 0 .003 because they need to be even smaller. Um, that should be about right. All right, so we can come back up here then to the other particle system that we have, our main stars. We can click the eye icon and make them visible again. And obviously these are still way too big. Uh, the size that I generally go with when rendering galaxies, and it depends on the resolution that you're rendering it at too. The size of the image that you're producing affects it pretty significantly. Uh, but for this, we're actually going to use just the default resolution. We might bring this up to like 65% or something instead. Around that size, we're going to want to bring the particle size down to about 0 .0001. And that's ridiculously tiny. I mean, you, you hit Alt-A and it looks like dust particles floating around. Uh, but they need to be that small in order for the, the scale to be believable. Uh, with that in place, we can go ahead and start increasing this particle amount. Uh, now, while we're still fiddling with the settings, we're not going to bring it all the way up to the maximum number until the very end, but we are going to increase this by quite a bit. I'm going to bring this up to about 30,000 to start with. Uh, now towards the end, we're going to be up to around 100,000 uh, for the final render. And for this render size that we're doing, I wouldn't recommend any fewer than uh, probably 70 or 80,000 particles for the final render. Um, just because that, that density of, star, of the stars is really important. And they have to be that small again for the scale to look believable. So with that in place, uh, we can start positioning the camera a bit. Let's try to get a better angle on this. So I just press 0 to go into camera view, right click the camera. I'm just going to press R to rotate it, maybe a G click the middle mouse button to kind of move that in or you could press G double tap Z to move it along its local Z axis and that does the same thing right about there maybe I'll hit uh, double tap R to get it on like a trackball rotation here kind of fiddle with until we get something like that G to move it around again something like that maybe I'll angle that a bit more and something like that, maybe rotate that a bit more, maybe pull that out a bit further, something like that will do. And we just want to take a look at this uh, just to make sure we have the sizes correct. So I'm just going to hit Alt-A, and we want to wait, like I said, for this to get between frame 60 and 70 approximately. Um, it doesn't take too long at this speed, since we've got about four frames per second on my computer anyway. It could be much faster or slower, depending on what you're using. And we'll stop it right about there. We'll go ahead and give that a quick render. Um, I'm going to go down to the sampling. We don't really need 128. We can drop that to probably 32, and we'll be fine. Go ahead and press F12 to render that. Ah, and the thing that I forgot to do immediately, right off the bat. Uh, we need to make sure that the emitter object is hidden. Uh, it's kind of difficult to see, but there's sort of a glow behind all the particles in this render because they're casting light on this disk, but we don't want this disk to be visible. So we actually have to turn that off in both of our particle systems. So we'll go over here to the particle settings. Uh, in the first particle system, we want to scroll down to the render settings and uncheck the emitter box. And then we want to do the same thing. I'm going to hide this particle system from the viewport again because my computer is running kind of slow. Go down to the particle system 2 there and do the exact same thing. I'm going to go ahead and save this before we go any farther too. Uh, go. We'll go ahead and give that another render and see if this is any better. There we go. We can see that there's there is no 
background there behind it. Nothing to catch the light. Um, look a little bright right now, uh, but they will look a little brighter than they're supposed to in the end, because like I said, we're going to be adding the volumetric effects here shortly, and that'll really, really affect the brightness. So that's about the pattern that we want. We could probably do with more brownie in motion, because it looks like they're following the spiral pattern, maybe a little too rigidly. So I'm going to go back to the first particle system here, and I'm going to go back to the first frame too, so this doesn't bug out on us. We'll set this to maybe 0.235, something like that. We increased it by yeah, about 50, uh, 60, 50, 60, something like that. Yeah, maybe 0.24 would be better. We'll leave it at about that. Um, we can mess with that more later. But for now, we will leave the particle settings, and we're going to turn our attention to the volumetric aspect of this. And basically what we'll be doing here is sort of simulating the clouds of gas and dust that you can see. Um, it's actually a two-step process. We'll be adding more to it and compositing in the end, actually. Uh, but to sort of add like a milky appearance to the galaxy and sort of a clustery, uh, cloudy appearance. So what we're going to do is press Shift A. We're going to add a cube. And we want to scale that down by pressing S, Z to scale it specifically along the z-axis down to uh, about that. Something we actually want it, we still want it pretty tall. And then I'm going to press S and Shift Z to scale on both the x and y axes. And we want to extend that out so that it's beyond the bounds of the disk there. And we basically want it so that we're, we're using this actually not only to add cloudiness to the galaxy, but also to sort of fade out the edges. Because if we hit F11 again to look at our previous render, um, it doesn't really fade out. You can see that there's a very clearly defined disk, and it looks a little too perfect to be something that you would maybe likely see in nature. Um, so we're going to add a little bit of, of sort of a, a fall off so that it sort of smooths out uh, a little more easily into space rather than just ending so abruptly. And this will also give that nice texture to the galaxy. So I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode and control tab 3 to switch to face select mode. And we are going to select the top face and right click shift to select the bottom face. And I'm just going to press E to extrude, right click S to scale in. We want to scale in all the way down. Because we're using this also as a fall off tool, we want it to be pretty thin towards the center of the galaxy. Because the center of the galaxy is going to be pretty bright. We want to leave that pretty much as it is once we add in the rest of the particles. Um, we don't really want too much cloudiness covering that. So we want to make sure that this is pretty thin around there. Maybe even uh, S, Shift, Z to scale it out a little bit more that way. And then I'm going to press Shift, Tab, 1 to go back to Vertex Select, because we're going to now press Control, R to add an edge loop. Uh, hover over this part in here, this upper part, and scroll up once. Uh, or you can press the plus key on the number pad to increase that. And I'm just going to hit Enter twice. So we just added two loop cuts right there that we can work with, and I'll do the same thing on the underside there. And we can go ahead and Alt right click this upper one, and do the same with this one. You know, let's start with the, the inner ones first. So let's Alt right click this one, and then Alt Shift right click this one to select both of them. And I'm going to press S, Z to scale it along the Z axis. And we'll move that into something like that. And then maybe S, Shift, Z to scale it out a bit more. Maybe SZ to bring that up a little more, something more like that. And then I'm going to Alt right click this, ooh, Alt right click this outer edge loop right here, and Alt Shift right click this one. SZ, scale it in along the Z axis, and S Shift Z to sort of maybe push that. Yeah, you know, maybe we'll we'll sort of leave that where it's at actually, kind of bring that down like that. That's about right. Sort of that uh, that curve is what we're looking for, um, so that it's nice and thin towards the center, and then it expands exponentially the farther out it gets. So we can go ahead and press Tab to go back into object mode, Z to switch back to solid. 
Um, I'm just going to set this smooth. I don't know if that really affects anything in the end, but I think it makes it easier to look at in the viewport. And one other quick thing we might want to try is go into camera view and see... might rotate this around more. We don't want one of the edges of that cube to block our view of the galaxy. So we can sort of reposition the camera. Uh, we can also edit the mesh if need be, but I think this shape is probably pretty fine. Actually, I might want to S, Shift C, maybe scale that in a little bit so it doesn't extend quite as far. Something like that will work probably. And let's make sure we keep that selected. I'm going to split my view here by going up to the upper right corner, hovering over the corner there, and clicking and dragging down. We're going to switch this upper window to the node editor and go ahead and add a new shader. And we'll just call this, uh, we'll just call it dust. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to delete that diffuse shader and we're going to press Shift A and add a volume scatter shader. Click that there and connect the volume to the volume input on the material output. And we want to increase this color to white again, just so that it's a complete absolute value there. Um, and we want to increase the density to, want to increase it to about 35, which is a pretty high density compared to the default value. Um, now if we just leave it like this, uh, it's, it's really not going to work out. It's just going to pretty much obscure the galaxy completely. We don't want that. We want like a cloudy pattern to it. So we're actually going to add a mix shader and connect the volume scatter to this first part. And I've had some trouble working with like maybe mixing a transparent shader with it since this is being plugged into the volume. The simplest thing I've found to do is just to press Shift A, go to color, and add not color input RGB. You can just plug that directly into the shader node even though the inputs don't match and just make that a solid black. And it has the exact same effect if this was all the way at 1, this would be completely transparent, all the way at 0, no transparency. So we're now controlling between the volume scatter and basically a transparency. Um, and to control that factor, we're going to add a noise texture to give it that cloudy look. So we'll press Shift-A, add a noise texture right there, we'll plug that color into the factor. And we'll want to bring the scale up to something like maybe about 20. Actually, it's best to move this to another layer, maybe even that second layer where we've been working with those stars. Um, kind of move this around. Maybe we'll hide that particular star. Uh, but something like this. And we'll go into rendered view so we can sort of see how this is going. And you notice, maybe we'll bring that back, Alt-H, bring that back, because it helps that light kind of helps you see where the cloud texture is. So you can sort of see it on the corners there, but it's not really very strong. Let's bring up the detail first. Uh, I, I always bring it up to the maximum, 16. It's probably a little unnecessary, but it's uh, it works best if you're working with larger renders especially. We'll give it a little distortion too, maybe 0.2. Uh, and that just adds a little bit of twisting and turning to parts of the cloud texture, or the noise texture. And then I'm going to go ahead and press Shift-A. We're going to add an RGB Curves node to give it some contrast, uh, because that'll make it really visible. You can sort of see it on the corners, like I said. But to really make this stand out, go ahead and click and add a point there. And click and drag a point there. And now you see that we have a very different result, and the cloud texture is immediately obvious. Uh, maybe we might even sharpen that a little more. Just something like that. Uh, and I'll press Z to go back into back into solid view. And we can merge this window again because we're actually done with this, this volume shader. So we can move this, M, to move it back to the first layer. And we can go ahead and Z to go into wireframe view so we can see this a little bit better. I want to make sure these are all visible. And we can go ahead and Alt-A to animate this. Wait until it gets to around frame 60 or 70. We can give this a render to see if this is about the level that we want it at. We might have to fiddle with the density settings and the, the volume shader a bit, but we uh, won't know until we give it a render. So we'll wait until it's right about, again, somewhere between 60 and 70. 
and we will go ahead and render this and I will pause the recording and stop it once it's f all right so this is the result uh, we can sort of see parts of the side of the box are kind of being illuminated by the light so we might want to uh, maybe scale that up a little bit more so the edges aren't quite as close to the galaxy um, I might not worry about that right now. It actually looks kind of nice in some parts. Uh, but for the most part, you can see that the cloud texture is working really well. Uh, it looks like there are these sort of clusters of stars and maybe some plumes of gas and dust in various regions. Um, one thing I noticed is that we might go ahead and after I come in here and maybe S, Shift, Z to scale it out a little bit more, uh, and then maybe S, Z, a little bit just to make sure we keep that fall off consistent uh, something else I might want to do let's go back to the first frame here is in the force field that we created I think I'm gonna decrease that strength a tiny bit more maybe negative point zero two instead of negative point zero two five and I might increase the Brownian motion a tiny bit more maybe we'll bump that up to point two five something like that okay uh, but with that out of the way uh, if we take a look at this this is pretty much the complete process outside of compositing so at this point really all we have left to do is increase the particle count and let it render for more samples or I guess uh, technically if if you really don't want to have as many particles in your scene and you're satisfied with sort of a slightly grainier image you can actually kind of rely on fireflies from the volumetric shader uh, and it looks like there are more particles than there really are in the scene uh, and that's a nice bit of fakery that might help uh, if you don't have a super powerful computer and maybe can't handle as many particles as we're about to try to add here um, other than that we can sort of leave that as is so I'm going to go ahead and animate this one last time I'm going to leave the... no, let's, let's increase the particle count to about... I'm going to increase it to... bring it up to 90,000, I would say, is probably a good number for this. Um, we might increase that a bit later, but I think that'll probably be good enough, at least for the sake of explaining the compositing and everything. So we'll go ahead and animate that, and then give that another render, and we'll start the compositing. All right, so we've got this rendered. Uh, it's looking maybe a little patchier than I might have wanted it, but uh, we'll leave it this way for the sake of the tutorial so we can move on to the compositing. Uh, and that's what we're gonna do right now. So let's go up to the uh, button here next to where it says default, and I'm just gonna switch to the compositing. And I'm going to merge these bottom two windows and merge this one with the one below, just so we have all the space to work with nodes press N2 to hide that little properties bar on the right. And we're going to click Use Nodes and Backdrop. And the Backdrop is so that we can see what we're doing here. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and press Shift A, Output, Viewer, and we'll connect the image to that just so we can see what we're doing here. Alright, uh, I'm going to move that aside because it's going to get in the way. We don't really need it right now. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we'll just add a little bit of a basic glow to everything. So I'm just going to move this out of the way, we'll go down to color, uh, mix, and we will mix this with a blurred version of this image. So filter, blur, connect the image input to that right there, and change this from Gaussian to fast Gaussian. It's a better blur quality. And we'll set this to like 10 by 10, something like that. Uh, and we'll change this from mix to add and we will bring this factor all the way down to like 0.15 something like that that's what it's at like at zero so maybe 0.125 something like that just to give it a little bit of a glow so it's not completely uh, empty around the stars in some of the places uh, the next thing I kinda wanna do is I wanna give a larger glow to sort of the center of the galaxy um, and to sort of separate that out, I think using an elliptical mask is probably oops, probably the best way to go about doing that. So I am going to duplicate this blur node, Shift D, move it over here, and we'll connect. 
we'll connect the first, the, the initial render into here. And we'll plug this into the viewer node so we can sort of see what we're doing. My goal is to blur this far enough so that this sharpness around the bright white in the center uh, blurs out to an extreme. So we'll try like 35 by, whoops, we don't need to extend the bounds, 35 by 35. It's still kind of sharp, so we'll try maybe 50 by 50. It's getting a little blurrier. Let's try 65 by 65. And that's about the blurriness that I want. Um, now again, if we sort of add a, another mix node right here and combine these, um, if we set this to add, it's it's too much because it's it's sort of covering like the entire galaxy and we don't need all that so since we only want this part around the center we're going to mask that out using an ellipse mask so press shift a we'll go down to matte right here and add an ellipse mask and we'll plug this into the factor just so we can right away see how this is acting and so you can see the the glow is taking effect right in there um, let me what happens if I flip that? Might be a little easier to see, maybe. Nah, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it like that. And I'm just gonna adjust the X value right here. We'll bring that back to about maybe a little more than 0 0.4, 0 0.42. These are just the coordinates, and all we're doing here is maybe make that 0 0.52, trying to center this ellipse around the center of the galaxy. So maybe 0 0.523 move it up a tiny bit more, and then we'll want to adjust the rotation other way, well, it doesn't really matter, we'll just keep going farther that way, so that the rotation kind of aligns with the galaxy there, uh, something like that is probably right about correct, and uh, we want to make it less elliptical and more circular, uh, so we'll make this maybe 0.135 by 0.1, something like that. And then we're going to blur this so the uh, difference isn't so sharp. So Shift-A, we'll add a blur node, change this from Gaussian to Fast Gaussian, and we'll try, let's try something like 30 to start out with to see if that's that's significant enough. That'll probably be significant enough. Um, okay, so it's about the blur effect that we're going with. I might blur that even more, maybe 40 by 40 would be better keep accidentally clicking that extend bounds box. We don't really need that. Okay, so something like that. Uh, and again, it's it's pretty bright, but it's, it's what we would expect. Um, so let's sort of move these out of the way. The next thing I want to do is I want to work with this elliptical mask a little more to give this a little more color variation. I kind of want to make the center maybe a little more yellow than the edges. So I am going to, first of all, let's add a color hue saturation value node. And I'm going to bump up the saturation to 1.1, first of all, because I think it's not quite as blue purple as I would like it to be. So that'll bump up the saturation a bit. Then I want to duplicate that and string it on immediately after. Turn the saturation back down to 1 on that. We don't need to increase that any further. And let's adjust the hue so that we get a yellowish color. So maybe even farther up that way, maybe yeah, around there, around 0.95 it looks like for this setup, something like that, maybe 0 0.9, 0 0.94, make it a little oranger, no, maybe 0.96 would actually be, that's, that's about right. So around 0.96, something like that. Um, and we will add another mix node, and we will mix this with the previous one based on, let's try this right off the bat with just the one that we already had to work with. And I think that actually works pretty well in this case. Um, I might try what is dropping the value do. Yeah, I might try decreasing the value a little bit because we're sort of starting to lose the, uh, the center of the galaxy amidst all this brightness. So by decreasing the value, we can sort of see a little more of it and the yellow is starting to shine through a bit more. I actually want maybe a little bit more. So I'm gonna duplicate this, duplicate this blur node. I think the blur amount is probably about right. We'll connect those and plug that into the factor of this mix node right there instead of what we had in there before. And I am going to increase the size a bit. We'll make the width maybe 0.16 and the height like 0.12 or something like that 
just to sort of spread that yellow color out a little bit more. And I might even blur that a bit more in this case, since it's kind of a harsh color contrast. And I kind of I kind of like that effect, so we'll leave that as is right there. Um, and the really the next big thing that we have to do is, like I said, we were going to add a little bit more uh, sort of dust cloudiness to regions of it. Um, and so we can go ahead and do that. These are going to be the darker regions. So the cloud texture added sort of a milkiness and a cloudiness to this. That's what the volumetric effect did. But now we want to add some sort of darker patches. Uh, so to do that, we are going to mix this result, what we have so far. We're going to set this to darken, actually. And we're going to use a black color, just completely solid black right there. And to use that, we're going to use as the mix factor, we can go up to input, texture, and I'm just going to plug that in there even though we don't have a texture loaded yet. And uh, we can go over here to the textures, cycles is kind of finicky and it's weird and how it has you create new textures, it's kind of hard to figure out how to work with all of this. So what I do is I typically just go to brush and add a new brush texture because we're not we're not really going to need it for anything. We're not doing any sculpting or anything like that. So we'll just use this as sort of a placeholder so that we can access it from the node right here. And we're going to change this from an image or movie type to a clouds type. We'll bring up the depth to like 24. Um, leave the size where it's at. We'll probably want to change that later. But we'll bring up the color ramp as well. I want to change this from soft noise to hard noise because I think that gives a better result. I'm actually going to flip these these color bands. Yeah, to something more like more like that. Maybe give that a shot. And we'll go ahead and load that texture. Let's give this a name. We'll just call it uh I don't know, dust again. And we'll load that dust texture right here. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so the scale is way off. So let's go ahead and bring the size down to like 0.1. Let's see how that works and it should automatically reload just like that, maybe even smaller, 0.05. You'll also notice we've got some kind of nasty stretching issues. Uh, to fix that, we can click on the scale option here in the node, and let's change the Y coordinate to 0.5. And that should resolve the scaling issue. There we go. Looks like it might have stretched it a little bit too far. I mean, we'll try 0.55. Um, that looks a little better, something like that. Okay, and we'll keep decreasing the size over here and the texture. Let's make that 0 0.03. Maybe make it even smaller until we get sort of the size that we're looking for. Maybe a little bigger than that, 0 0.04. That's about the sweet spot it looks like. Yeah, something like that. And let's see here, if we can sort of mess with this color ramp a little bit more because uh, this is it's looking kind of sharp. We want to maybe thin that out a little bit more. Maybe back off this this black side of the color ramp a bit more. Um, yeah, to let sort of some of that blurriness come back, maybe. Pull this back a bit farther. I might inch this up a little more, actually. And just sort of fiddle with this until you get something that looks about right. Sort of what you're looking for. I might actually change this from black to like a dark brown kind of color. Let's see how that affects it. Because I feel like that might... Yeah, that's pretty bright. It's going to have to be pretty dark for it to... Yeah, maybe something something like that. Instead of just a, a straight solid black. So that kind of shows up a little better in the outer edges. Which is where it's going to be most visible anyway. Might actually make that a tiny bit brighter. Um, because we're going to use another elliptical mask to make sure that none of this gets in the center of the galaxy. Because again, you don't really see very much of that in the center of the galaxy. Uh, most star formation occurs in the, the outer layers, in the arms of the spiral. Um, so we can go ahead and take this. I am going to duplicate this mix node over here. And we will combine these again. And as the mix factor, we will use we can probably just take one of these previous two. Let's go ahead and take the second elliptical mask that we use to work with the colors. And let's try that here and see how that works. 
Yeah, there we go. So something like that. And that just adds even more finesse to like the texturing of the, the arms and the spiral. And if the effect is a bit too strong, you can, uh, of course, duplicate the mix node, mixing yet again. And uh, you can mix that with the effect before we added that darken. So something like that. Uh, now this is set to 1, so you'll see none of the effect. And then we can sort of bring this down to maybe 0.5 to increase it. Wait a little while. And then you can see it sort of coming in. I like it pretty strong, so pretty close to 0, maybe about 0.2 is where I might keep it. Maybe even lower than that, actually, 0.125, something like that. That, that texturing effect really helps sell the effect of, of the galaxy. Um, okay. So, at this point, really, the only other thing I would do is probably we can go over here and we want to add a little bit of glare to some of these brighter stars. So, I am going to mask out the center of the galaxy because if we try to add glare, that's going to overpower it completely. Um, and it's better to mask that out beforehand than after. So, I am going to duplicate the mix node yet again mix this with solid black and as the factor let's take that same exact I'm zooming out pretty far I hope you can still see pretty well we'll take the same exact uh, blur node connected to the elliptical mask that we used for the color yet again and we'll plug that into the factor just so we can kind of hide out that area and now it's not completely gone but I don't know if setting this to multiply would help I don't think it will. It's probably about as dark as it's going to get, but that's fine for the purposes of, of what we're doing because we only need the other stars to be brighter than the center. It doesn't matter if the center is still a little visible. So let's go ahead and press Shift A and add a glare node under filter. Plug that into there. We want to leave it on streaks and we're going to have to decrease the threshold quite a bit. So let's, I'm going to leave the quality at medium for now, I guess, but I'm going to decrease the threshold to like 0.1. And let's see if, if that sort of does anything with what we have there. There we go. Yeah, so that's catching a couple of the stars. We might want to even, you know, I think I'm going to add a, or an RGB curves node in between there. I'm really going to bring up the contrast. See how that looks. I'm just going to bypass the glare node completely for a second, just so we can sort of see how this plays out. So it's a little more responsive. There we go. Now you see we're getting like the really, only the really bright stuff. So if we go ahead and plug that back in, uh, maybe we won't have glare on, on every single thing. So we're sort of catching pretty much every star. Um, yeah, so that works. And then basically we can take that Add one more mix node, color mix, mix that with, where did we have that? We had that back, back here, I believe, this mix node. Before we started uh, like masking out the center of the galaxy and everything, right about there. We can set this to add, actually, not mix, because we want to just sort of overlay those on top. Wait a second for that to kick in. There we go. And now we have just a couple spots in the galaxy where you can see like the sort of flares with kind of the pointy edges sticking out like you see in a lot of galaxy galaxy photos actually. Um, and that's pretty much it. The only other things I might do, maybe I would come back here and turn down the value a bit more so the center isn't quite as overpowering. Um, but other than that, I think the last thing I would do would probably be, if we move this out of the way, give it one final glow. So give this one more mix node. I think I said that last time. This is really is the last one though. Uh, we'll connect this add output to the input for the blur node that we just added. Change that to fast Gaussian. Plug that into the second input there. Give this a much greater value, something big like, I don't know, 70 by 70, something like that. And wait for that to take effect. Uh, the glare is really what's slowing it down. The glare and this uh, this texture that we added for the additional dust clouds. 
I forgot to set that to add. And we want to decrease this probably down to something like 0.04 or something. We don't want it to be really that overpowering, just sort of a faint glow around the entire galaxy. And I believe that's the last effect that I, that I included on this. Might make that a little more powerful, maybe 0.08. Uh, maybe a couple other things you could try would be to add some sort of color dispersion uh, using like the lens distortion node and the dispersion setting or maybe shifting color channels, something like that to give it sort of a, a chromatic aberration kind of look. Uh, but other than that, this is, this is pretty much complete. I'm going to bring back, really scrolled out now, this is the, uh, the final output node right there. And I am going to take the add node and plug that into the final output, just in case we ever decide to give this another render. I'm not planning on it. The render times get pretty long with this. But just so we have that completed, we can come back over here, switch this in the uh, image editor from the render result to the viewer node so we don't have to re-render anything. And there's the final render. You can press F3 and save to your computer. And this is pretty much done. Unfortunately, this effect doesn't really work for animation. Uh, I mean, as I'm sure you could tell at this point by all the compositing we did with the elliptical masks. Also, when you get to really tiny objects like stars uh, that are as small as this, they get really flickery and jittery and animations don't really work. But for a still, a still render, I think this method works pretty well. You can try it out on a couple different galaxies too, maybe a barred spiral. Uh, I'd love to see what you come up with as a result of this tutorial. And uh, that's pretty much it for this one. So thanks for watching. I'll see you again on the next one.